These are clematis. They're a climbing vine that will grow up just about anything, and they're absolutely one of the most eye-catching of ornamentals. Wild clematis have their origins in China, but their beauty and popularity saw them become must-have garden plants in Europe in the 19th century. Since then, plant breeders have had their shoulder to the clematis wheel, and now there's around 400 cultivars available. And many of them are grown here at Alameda Homestead Nursery on Melbourne's southern outskirts. It's grown a lot since it was started by Judy and David Button as a backyard operation 35 years ago. Now their daughter Saffron works in the business too. I've been here since I was born, basically, yeah. growing up with clematis. They're just so spectacular. There's so many different colours and different ones to choose from. They can be used for many different things. You can use them over an archway as a ground cover or even as a hanging basket. Now, this is ice blue, which is a perfect compact variety to use in a hanging basket. It's beautiful. Why is it called ice blue, though? Because it yeah, doesn't blue got... to me. Yeah, it has a like, nice, beautiful blue stripe down the middle ah, of the petals. you can see yeah. it. And it is also a beautiful variety that can be used in a hanging basket. Masses of flowers. Yeah, they have a beautiful bouquet of flowers, yep. Before we look at the next clematis, saffron has to clear the way. Clematis are very vigorous. Come on, Jane. Oh, it's a bit like a jungle down <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, I know, they grow pretty fast. But we haven't done them any harm by chopping them. No, not at all. Oh, they love it. <laughs> what is this one? Um, this is Elsa's Path. It's a beautiful, large flowering clematis. It lives up to that sort of cliche, a dinner plate size clematis. Yes, yeah, the flowers are huge. Yeah. But I also like that centrepiece. Yeah, it's very spectacular with the pink in the middle. Yeah. yeah it's lovely. And then they go sort of soft and fluffy. Yeah. They're, they're nice really... seed pods. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful all the time. Wow, this is a different form. Golly, what is it? Um, it's Bell of Taranaki, which is a sport of multi-blue, so it's just a lot more double than multi-blue. <laughs> it's, it's like a pom-pom. Yeah, it's, it's sort beautiful. of like a dahlia near, yeah. isn't it? I must say, I still like the, the, the open <laughs> ones, though. Yeah. But it's different, each to his own. I do like how they have these wonderful buds. Yeah, it's exciting to see the flowers coming through. Yes, really expectation. <laughs> What's that one called? Um, that one's Vancouver Starry Nights. It's, it's very special. It's different, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice with a beautiful contrasting stripe down the middle. Amazing. What would you use that one for? That would be perfect, growing on an obelisk or even up through a climbing rose. Oh, good yeah. combination, yeah, yes. Yeah, mix and match. They mainly blues and mauves and whites, aren't they? But I do spot that one over there. Yeah, that's a spectacular red one. That's Alana. And it's sort of a lovely mixture of mauvey red, isn't it? Yeah, it's very powerful. It packs a mm. nice, beautiful punch. Yeah, the, some of them are very elegant, aren't yeah. they? And some of them just go boing yeah. in your face. OK, Saffron's given you some ideas for choosing a variety of clematis for your place, but how do you look after them? It's time to talk to Saffron's mum, Judy. She's chief propagator and undisputed queen of clematis. As long as they get about five to six hours sunlight during the day, they'll do a good job. If you would grow a rose in that spot, you would grow a clematis. Make sure it's in well-drained soil, moisture holding, so they don't like wet feet. Right. We're going to give this a bit of a prune before we plant it. I'll hold it and you can do the, the cutting. There OK. We, we just cut above the notes. Yeah. The plant has got a lot better chance to get established if it hasn't got the support all yeah. this. Oh, they're nice looking roots, aren't they? They're beautiful, Jane. But yeah. you don't tease the roots of a clematis. You just get the plant and plonk it straight in. Wow, that's a bit unusual, isn't it? Plant it deeper so you've got a few buds under the ground, so if anything happens to the plant above the ground, like the snails eat it off or a husband cuts it off because it looks dead, it can always shoot out again. Does that happen a lot? That's a regular occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> Jolly husbands. <laughs> 
Now, they are pretty heavy feeders, aren't they? They are. Clematis are very hungry plants, mm. Shane, yeah. Mm. We give them a good handful of fertiliser each time we prune them. Yeah, so that's three times a year with this one? Yeah. And, of course, you've got to water it in well. And they do like mulch, don't they, Judy? Yeah, they're good. They're, yeah. um, you need to mulch them well to keep the roots cool and the moisture in. OK. And, of course, this will need something to grow on to. Yeah. So we've got this nice obelisk. Oh, very nice. We'll put over the top of the plant. Yep. Good. You could even use a wigwam, couldn't you? That's it. You know, some bamboo or something. Lastly, Good. Judy's right. going to show us how to prune these large-sized spring flowering types that we've been looking at today. You prune when the plant is finished flowering, uh, which is late spring and late summer, and in the winter time. And you might think it's strange to prune three times, but you're actually encouraging new growth on these large flowered ones, yeah. aren't you? You get more branches, you get more flowers. Yeah. You prune about 20 centimetres above that ground level. Yep. When you prune now, six to eight weeks later, you get another flush of flowers, just like roses. And feed them up and away they go. That's right. Lovely. Judy has worked with Clematis every day for the last 35 years. Does she ever tire of them? They are such a joy, Jane. They're just so beautiful. Yeah, no, I still love them. 